Hi everyone, I am Renee and uh, it's Friday today. It's very rainy outside, so I hope everyone's staying dry. Um, today we're going to be talking about emotions and eating. And I have a few slides that I've prepared. And then after my presentation, we're open to questions and um, any discussions that you want to bring forward and we can uh, talk about it. Uh, we have a whole hour, so I hope you guys, you know, um, come up with uh, anything that you want to share. And I'm here to answer any questions or be here for any discussions after. All right, so let me share my screen and we can start. So emotions and eating, this is actually very, very common. It's also um, dear to my heart. I've um, been struggling with uh, Graves' disease. I've had that, um, I think about 18 years ago now, and um, I have a family history of diabetes and heart disease. My father passed away from complications of diabetic um, hypoglycemia and also heart failure. And also my mom has um, hypertension now, so we have to look at her uh, sodium intake and help her increase her physical activity as well as, you know, just keeping ourselves healthy and happy at the same time. And it's a very hard struggle with current, um, you know, COVID situations being very emotional and anxious. And it's just a lot of things going on with our lives and with work. And a lot of people are suffering from emotional eating and uh, eventually causing weight gain and weight gain can cause a lot of different things like diabetes and hypertension and obesity. So I'm Renee and I am a registered dietitian in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, and I have a clinical uh, nutrition background. I have a master's degree in that and I've been practicing as a registered dietitian for over 10 years now. And I have a company called Trunosh. So if you want um, recipes and uh, current nutritional uh, trends and research information, I also have some blogs on there. So please take a look at that. So let's start about talking about our gut and our brain and how they are interconnected. Well, I mean, our whole body should be looked at as a holistic body and everything is connected with each other. But the brain and the gut are very interesting and they are really um, relating on each other with different signals, right? So let's talk about our gut first. It, 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 it is something that helps break down the food that we eat and helps absorb nutrients and support our bodily functions, right? If we don't eat, we can't really function. We have no nutrients and we can't live. So it helps us with our energy production, also hormone balance, skin health, mental health, everything that we need to function, we use our gut for, as well as also toxin and waste elimination. So it also works with our kidneys and liver. And on our Tuesday sessions, we talked also about our kidney health and our liver health. So I urge you guys to look back in our Tuesday sessions and review what we've talked about and also the cooking demos that I've shared with you guys. So scientists actually call our gut a, 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 a little brain, which is interesting, right? So it's called the enteric nervic nervous system, which is not so little, right? It spans all the way from your mouth, all the way down to your rectum. And it, uh, there's so many connections in your body. Your intestines are a very long structure that helps absorb nutrients, help break down your food, and also help you eliminate waste. There are two thin layers, but that there's more than a hundred million nerve cells lining your uh, gastrointestinal tract. All right, so that is called the ENS, the enteric nervous system, and it triggers big emotional shifts by people coping with um, symptoms that deal with irritable bowel syndrome or IBS and, um, you know, can have 
uh, issues that uh, relate to bowel problems such as constipation, diarrhea, bloating, pain, and stomach, stomach upset. So for decades, researchers and doctors thought that anxiety and depression are contributed to, to, to these problems, but what we eat and how our gut health is also relates to how we function. So why we're talking about emotions and eating and our gut health and our mood, because it is an issue that most people deal with and it deals with our immune system, our mood, our mental health, and it can have, um, you know, effects that causes autoimmune diseases, endocrine disorders, skin, skin conditions, and even cancer. Who's involved? Well, anything that has to do with work stress or financial worries, health issues, relationships, can be the root cause of your emotions and therefore leading to emotional eating. We'll talk about what exactly emotional eating is later, but it affects everybody, both sexist, men, women, anybody um, that has um, a relationship with food, right? And according to different studies, emotional eating is actually more common uh, with women than men, all right? So um, it is a little bit more towards women, but men also suffer from that also. So we talk about gut feelings. I mean, 70% of your immune system is in the gut. So therefore, it really relates to our feelings what, with the different types of food we eat, okay? So if you heard of, uh, you know, you feel like a little weird feeling in your gut, but it also contributes to your emotions. And poor digestions, you know, is, is something that's related to some neurotransmitters like serotonin in our small intestine. Um, serotonin is produce there, 90% of the serotonin, which is a huge um, um, number of hormones that get produced in our intestines. And if you have low serotonin levels, which means it can cause different shifts in your mental health. So what you can do is really clean up your, um, your diet, all right? So what exactly is emotional eating? Well, People emotionally eat because um, they have um, problems dealing with some of their uh, thoughts and feelings and they go towards food and so, so then they lean towards food to help soothe their negative feelings and they may even feel gut or shame after lead eating this way because it leads to a cycle of excess eating and it's associated with weight gain. Sorry, I'm just going to um, turn off my volume one second for this one. Excuse me. There we go. Okay, so let's go back to our emotional eating. All right, so if you find yourself, you know, going to the pantry or feeling a little bit down, you want to start noticing these things that are coming up. And if really is food the answer to help you um, eliminate these stressful feelings or these feelings of depression or anxiety, right? So finding food, comfort and food is common and we want to really understand what ways we can um, help to alleviate, alleviate these feelings. So why food? Well, negative emotions may lead to a feeling of emptiness, right? So therefore, a lot of people reach to their pantries to find food that can help you fill that void or create a sense of fullness, but it's really mostly temporary. And there are other factors that um, relate to food because it is also helps you, you know, retreat from um, some social settings that you're uncomfortable with, um, or, you know, it can help you retreat from social support during these times of emotional needs, not engaging activities that might otherwise relieve stress and sadness and so on. Food is also something that people go towards because these activities might be 
adding to their stress, okay? And then really not understand the difference between physical and emotional hunger. So as I said, asking yourself these questions, are you really hungry or are you just bored or you're just feeling a little bit down? And many people suffer from ne negative self-talk, right? And this is common and, and it's normal that people have these expectations of themselves. Therefore, if these negative self-talk keeps going on, then you can, you know, expect some, some people, you know, going towards some binging episodes. And then this can also create a cycle of emotional eating. And, and these can change hormone levels and cortisol actually is one of these hormones that increase when you're stressed and in response you actually get hungry and then can lead to some cravings. So some of these things can help you, you know, decipher between what's actually physical hunger and emotional hunger. So on this table I've created one side is physical hunger and it really develops slowly over time and you know you desire a different variety of food groups and then you feel a sensation of fullness and you take it as a cue to stop eating and then for an, the last step is there's really no negative feelings about eating when you're actually physically hungry so if you compare it to emotional hunger, well, it comes usually suddenly or abruptly and you crave certain foods like something that has high sugar or high fat, like a donut or a candy. And you may be binging on these foods and you don't feel a sensation of fullness after eating um, what you crave, right? And then you usually have a sense of guilt or shame after eating these foods and that is the major difference between physical hunger and emotional hunger. You want to try to banish distractions and you may find yourself eating, you know, without even thinking when you're eating in front of a television or a computer when you're working. These are always things that you can ask yourself. Do you really need that uh, snack when you're watching TV or when you're actually on the computer? And, you know, you want to be able to decipher between if you're actually hungry or you're actually just emotionally hungry, all right? And focus on your food, which can help you with biting and chewing a little bit longer. Take a little bit more time to understand where your food comes from or how much time someone has put into creating this food or even how much time you yourself has put into thinking over what you've put in your bowl or plate, right? Try to chew 10 to 30 times more before you swallow that food and really understand the flavors and the aroma and the food that you're putting in your mouth. These things can give your time, mind, your, your mind to catch up with your stomach. So it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for your stomach to send these signals to your brain to really help you understand that you're eating something and to help you feel a sense of fullness. So the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about some uh, different types of food that really can help you um, um, heighten the level of serotonin in your body and actually can help alleviate some signs of anxiety and maybe even reduce depression. Brazil nuts, they're high in sodium, I mean, sorry, not sodium, selenium, and then it can help you, um, you know, decrease inflammation and can help uh, disorders such as anxiety because it can help you improve um, certain things in your body that can help decrease such anxiety. Pumpkin seeds, they're a great source of potassium and they regulate electrolytes in your body, so help you man manage blood pressure also. So in another words, like this whole uh, session, what we're doing, it really combines all these previous sessions that I've been telling and talking about with you on Tuesdays, because we actually go into most of the food groups and different types of foods that I've already mentioned in the previous session. So let's finish with the potassium rich foods. So pumpkin seeds, bananas, these are um, known to help you reduce your stress and anxiety. Chocolate. Chocolate has high tryptophan, so it is also a precursor to serotonin, which is the happy uh, hormone in your brain. But try to choose dark chocolate 
which means about 70% are above. And that is also a good source of magnesium also. So can, um, magnesium can also reduce your symptoms of depression. And then when you're going towards some tea, try to like look for some teas that don't have too much caffeine. Chamomile tea can be useful. It can calm down your nerves and help manage your anxiety as well. Um, some so certain foods that we have here, fermented foods, they've been studied very, very widely. We have a session previously on probiotics and prebiotics. If you don't know the difference between those two, you should review my session. Uh, that should be like about a month and a half ago on Kinetra's website. So fermented foods are um, a, a lot of different varieties now, right? So we have sauerkraut, we have yogurt, we have kefir, we also have pickles and kimchi. Those are all different fermented foods with different strains of bacteria in them. And I can go on and on forever. So kombuchas also have fermented foods, but that has a certain amount of sugar in it. So make sure you read your labels and know that 5% is okay. If you're reaching towards that 15% per uh, serving of your daily values, you might want to consider something else. Um, fatty fish. So we cook some salmon together. It's also made a dip with sardines. Um, you can try to incorporate mackerel and even herring. Those have high omega 3. And we learned what exactly omega-3 is, right? So that is the double bond at the third carbon of that long fatty acid train. And it helps you with your cognitive functions. So therefore, it can relate to mental health. So it can improve anxiety and depression as well. So vitamin D, we had a whole session about vitamin D and how it can alleviate some mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. Um, eggs have vitamin D in it and also contains tryptophan. So in the previous slide, we talked about tryptophan as a neurotransmitter or it can be a um, precursor to serotonin. So serotonin, once again, is a chemical neurotransmitter that mostly is produced in your gut and in your small intestines. We said about 95% of serotonin is produced in your gut. And this helps you regulate mood. All right, and also helps you rate sleep, memory, and behavior. So it, it can help you improve your brain function and relieve anxiety. Curcumin, so those of you ha who um, saw my, I guess the uh, blood pressure and the anti-inflammatory -inflam food session, know what curcumin is, and it's highly in turmeric which is a tuber in the same family as ginger. And these are anti-inflammatory agents, can reduce anxiety levels, and also it's an antioxidant that can reduce oxidative stress. So therefore, people who are experiencing mood disorders, such as anxiety and depression, may make some tea with turmeric, add tea to your, I mean, add turmeric to your sauces. You can even add turmeric to your rice while you cook it and turn your rice yellow or even to your noodles yellow. And it can really brighten up the sauce colors and your food colors by adding turmeric. And it's really easy to find. You can find them in powder form. In Asian stores, you can find fresh turmeric and you can actually grate this turmeric into your salads or any salad dressings that you're making. So choose your health. That's really what I'm here to tell you how to improve your health, how to improve your gut health, how to improve your happiness when you choose the right types of foods, the right types of fats, and also incorporating physical activity into your daily routine, right? I'm not talking about lifting heavy weights, but also going for a brisk walk when the sun's out, going out gardening when it's um, clear out and maybe 
lifting some weights while you walk, right? Just some water bottles will add a little extra weight to your arms. And maybe going uphill and downhill, just to choose a variety of different trails that you can find within, you know, um, your neighborhood can also help you relieve stress. Maybe um, try to find a meditation session either online or your local uh, yoga studio if you can take a yoga class now that many studios are still doing online classes find one that suits you getting a massage try to lower your caffeine intake or to the uh, upper half of your day so you won't lose any sleep because you have that caffeine in your system that hasn't been um, broken down and excreted yet. Maybe calling a friend or talking to a family member, watching a comedy TV show or a movie that can help you laugh. And, um, you know, laughing really is also another medicine. Getting enough sleep is also very important. Seven to eight hours really help you rejuvenate and recover. Eating slowly, we talked about chewing 10 to 30 times before you swallow. That can really help you promote digestion and absorption of nutrients and also really help you appreciate your food, right? Knowing, you know, different spices that are in your food and different types of uh, herbs and different nu nutrition information that you can look at when you're chewing on that package that you just opened really can help you slow down your eating because as we said it takes about 15 to 20 minutes before your brain realizes that you've eaten something and you should stop staying hydrated it's warm now so try to bring a water bottle out with you when you're going out um, to the office or for a walk and it doesn't have to be water right we had some ideas in my previous sessions that you can add different berries into your water cucumber slice maybe or mint or even just some lemon to help improve the taste of your water and um, with chamomile that can really reduce reduce some anxiety you can actually make a whole jug of chamomile tea and put it in the fridge and then you can use that as your hydration um, during the day and it doesn't have to be just water. Probiotics and prebiotics, right? So make sure if you are taking supplements, um, not all supplements are created equal and they have different qualities and you can have look at your previous, our previous session to see what um, recommendations I've given you. And it doesn't have to be in supplement form. Food form is great. Yogurt, your kefir, your kimchi, your sauerkraut. Those are good things that you can add to your salad, to a sauce, to any side dish that can really bring out whatever you're cooking as your main dish, right? And then, you know, common trigger foods that can be eliminated to reduce your anxiety, right? So such as processed foods that have high in sugar, high in sodium, high in fat. So again, make sure you read your labels to make sure that each serving is not over 15% of your daily value. Try to incorporate more plant-based foods or whole foods with lean protein. Um, try to, you know, maybe get some a good vegetable scrubs and, and scrub the skin of your carrots or your potatoes or your beets and wash them well. Take away all your dirt and, and make sure that you, um, you know, take away most of the pesticides. You can try to buy organic. If you can't, try to get some baking soda and water, um, one tablespoon of baking soda to one gallon of water, soak your vegetables in it for maybe 10 minutes and wash it away and try to help yourself with decreasing the amount of pesticides in your food because a lot of the fiber and the antioxidants are in this, the, the peel of the fruits and vegetables. And then fiber is always your friend and it can help promotes a lot of different things in your gut, right? Can feed your 
good flora and so your gut has happy bacteria that can help you digest your food and help, help you absorb your nutrients and can also help you synthesize some essential fatty acids as well and things with fiber can slow down your digestion which means you can feel fuller a little bit longer so you won't be craving those foods that have high sugar and high fats right if you're eating a lot of fiber you will be a little bit more satiated and satisfied so we recommend that you at least have 25 grams of fiber in a day all right you can eat whole fruits whole vegetables you can choose whole grains you know when you're buying pasta try to find the whole wheat pasta when you're buying rice try to add um brown rice or even quinoa right so i have a mix that has quinoa white rice, brown rice, and flax seeds in my white rice mixed grain um, mix. So try to incorporate different types of grains in your diet to give yourself some texture and some color. All right, so another way that you can deal with uh, some negative emotions is to really understand that these are things that affect your health and you need to um, read about it or really need to find someone to talk about it to decompress and relax from your day of stress, right? So maintaining a health is not just one supplement or one diet or one exercise. You really need to look at it as a holistic approach, right? So um, if you're not eating enough vitamin D in your diet, so yes, go for that supplement and talk to your doctor. Go get your blood taken every year to make sure that you are on, on the right track with your glucose, with your um, cholesterol, with your vitamin D and with your B12, right? And what is not also about one diet that you are um, adapting. It's also not about one exercise. You want to try to dabble in different exercises that work out your whole body. Um, and there are different types of support systems that you can go and help yourself understand why you're so emotional and why you're always going to that food item that you love so much. Overeaters Anonymous is an great organization that can help you address overeating and emotional eating and also compulsive eating and other eating disorders and don't be afraid to reach out and ask your doctor and maybe it can refer you to a counselor or a coach or a dietitian that can help you identify these emotional symptoms and help you really be on the right path to help you overcome emotional eating. And some social sites like Meetup can actually help. Um, there are some Meetup groups that can focus on emotional eating and support groups that can really help you drive yourself to become a better and happier and healthier human being. All right. So another thing that you can do is, you know, help prevent these emotional eating uh, symptoms and improve your anxiety levels and also um, alleviate some of your depression symptoms. HealthLink BC is wonderful. It's free. You can just pick up your phone and call 811. They have a great website, so healthlinkbc.ca. And there are things that you can learn about um, yourself and different symptoms that you need to know about about yourself and when you know you can go see a doctor and where to find your local doctor or your clinic. BC Dietitians is also another great platform, bcdietitians.ca. Fill out a form on there and see if you can get paired with a dietitian to talk to about your emotional uh, eating symptoms as well. All right, so that is my presentation and let's go back to see if there are any questions that I can answer and um, any comments on Facebook, I can't really see if uh, people have commented on Facebook. So I would uh, rely on Samantha here with the Disability Foundation to tell me if anybody's typed anything on the Facebook comments. And I can also uh, be open to any attendees here if you want to ask, ask me any questions or even share any stories or any insights that um, you have can uh, you know help oh thank you Charlene Lucas on Facebook for um, the comments 
and I'm open to conversations here too if the attendees here want to be on board also and can help with any um, stories that they want to share or any tips they want to share that would be helpful also or if Samantha you yourself have any questions you can also add, um, address them with me as well No. Does anybody want me to go back um, to any particular slide um, that want me to extrapolate on with uh, some of the items that we've touched based on? Anybody miss any foods that can help decrease anxiety or improve your mood? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so the immune system for sure. So we've we've um, on on our Tuesday sessions we have a few sessions that touched on vitamin D, a few uh, and also anti-inflammatory foods, as well as um, one on actually um, your immune system and also um, your mood. So if we think about um, some of your immune system is really about helping you ward off diseases. And we talked about eating whole fruits and vegetables because most of the antioxidants is on the skin. If you think about it, a fruit and vegetables can't grow legs and run away from a rodent or a bug or run away from the rain. And most of its defense mechanism is on its skin. So therefore it's concentrating their antioxidants on the skin to help prote protect themselves with their um, environment and, and atmosphere. Right? So same thing with us. The whole reason why we eat foods with antioxidants is to protect ourselves with the toxins that we breathe in or some of the pesticides and that we've eaten or some of the um, pathogens that could be in our food that if it's not cooked well enough, right? We want to really focus on um, those types of foods that really can help us with our defense mechanism, right? So um, I'm talking about your immune system. We talked about different colors of um, fruits and vegetables. We have berries that are in season right now. Blueberries have um, anthocyanins, which is an antioxidant for your eyes and also can help decrease your blood pressure. So that can actually help your overall immune system. Um, if you have um, a local farmer's market that you can go to, right? So some cherries are at the end of the season, but still they can, uh, there's some cherries on board and cherries have a natural melatonin in, you, in there. So it can help you improve your sleep. So sleeping um, seven to, to eight hours really can help you improve your immune system also because you need that time of rest to recover and to feel rejuvenated to start off your day. And also um, different foods like fatty fish, right? So salmon, mackerel, herring, sardines, those are full of omega-3s and they have um, uh, protective systems for uh, helping your, your um, in, uh, the, the sense of fatty acids. So if you have healthy fats that can actually help you absorb your vitamin A, D, E, and K because those are your fat soluble vitamins. And without healthy fat, you can't really keep those vitamins and you would be excreting them. So um, having flax seeds also if you are um, vegetarian can and also chia seeds, those have omega-3s in it. And omega-3 fatty acids are shown to decrease your blood pressure and improve your immune system as well. And what else? We can talk about this forever, I feel like. Um, so carrots, carrots have your beta carotene, right? That can is a precursor to your vitamin A. 
um, that can help with your vision and also help with warding off some um, uh, oxidative stress in your body. So that can also help you with your immune system as well. Okay, yeah, so try to pick different colors uh, in your grocery store. You know, if you're eating a lot of red fruits and vegetables one week, try to go to a lot of more leafy greens. Leafy greens are great. They're high in vitamin K. They're also great with potassium levels. Potassium is great for uh, electrolyte balance and can help you alleviate some of the high sodium levels in your body, therefore improving your blood circulation and decreasing your blood pressure. Okay, so I urge you to, um, yeah, review some of my previous sessions. We've been on uh, Connectra's Facebook Live for the last three months and every week I've talked about a different topic and they're quite fun to rewatch because there are also cooking demos in the sessions and you can try a different recipe every day when if you've watched some of my cooking demos right great and we have a uh, another question from Odin and Yes, so um, my products that are all sugar-free and gluten-free as well as vegan uh, can be purchased online on truenosh.com and we're doing free delivery and shipping to all of Canada if you uh, spend $50 or more on the website. And there are more recipes on the website too. Just go on the recipe uh, tab and also different blog posts and you can find you know things that we talk about and research on is like sugar and artificial sweeteners and sweeteners and we also have a blog posts on fermented foods and also black garlic as well as some um, exercise ideas that you can do at home. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that question. Anybody else? No? And we can go on, on some of my products too. I mean, I've make it a, made it a point to increase fiber and, in my foods by uh, using whole fruits and vegetables. I've had this mixed grain rice on for a few weeks now, and a lot of people have told me that this is a great um, option for those who are trying to incorporate more whole grains in their meals and with a little bit of white rice there, you can slowly add different whole grains like brown rice and quinoa as well as flax seeds in your, in your meal planning because a lot of these things are hard to find. Mm -hmm. So, I'm happy to stick around for any questions or if anybody has any um, thing that they want to share about emotional eating. I'm also here to listen to any of your stories because your story can also help other people understand their struggles. And recently I've been taken up, uh, well, I've been nominated for the 25 push-up challenge. Have you guys heard about the 25 push-up challenge? It is actually to raise, uh, raise awareness of mental health and depression and anxiety. And a lot of people who have anxiety, 
depression and mood disorders go towards emotional eating because it is something that really uh, fills that void in and therefore a lot of people who have um, these mood disorders anxiety and depression are suffering also from being overweight because a lot of people go towards food as their answer to their issues but um, you know dietitians are here to help you with discovering different things that you can do to help you reach a healthier goal weight and um, so I've taken on this 25 push-ups a day challenge and I'm on my day 21 today. So I'm very excited that I've done 21 days of push-ups already. So go me. So if anybody who is interested, just go online and find out what ways that they can do to help or ways, uh, raise awareness for um, the mental health and disable, disabled community. So that's what my way of uh, contributing. And hopefully today you've taken away some of the um, information that I've given you and the webinar and slides are available on Kenetra and, Dis and the Disability Foundation um, on their Facebook uh, page. So you can go and review the slides and my presentation anytime. So are there any questions again, um, Samantha? Thank you, Marnie, for being here. And if you can't think of any things to ask me or um, stories to share or anything that you would like to add to my presentation, you can always email me info at trunosh.com and, uh, you know, I'm, I can answer your questions there and would love to hear uh, about anything that comes up to your head that has to do with my presentations on um, Kanetra's live Facebook page or Disability Foundation. I'm happy to talk about it with you. Oh, thanks, Odin. You bought my oyster sauce. Yeah, it is a vegan oyster style sauce and uh, we use kelp and mushrooms instead of oysters. And for the a little bit of sweetness, there's a little bit of raisins in there. But what I haven't told you guys is I actually ferment my own garlic. It is a white garlic that transforms to a black garlic after about three and a half weeks of fermentation and it's a little bit higher heat than a regular fermentation process and after the white garlic turns black it actually gives a really sweet uh, flavor and the texture is almost like a date and i love it so i've decided to use the black garlic in my vegan oyster sauce to create that umami flavor and that extra complexity when you're cooking with my oyster style sauce so thanks for the feedback and you put it on your quinoa wonderful that's amazing thanks for sharing odin did i meet you at the ubc farm a few weeks ago i think so yes Cool. So tomorrow we're also available at the UBC farm. So if you have any plans to go outside, come check out some of the farmers markets that are open. Um, Trunosh will be at UBC farm from nine to one. And then if you're in Surrey on, on Sunday, 
We'll also be at the Clayton Farmers Market, which is in the Clayton Secondary School parking lot. And there we have about 59 vendors, which is amazing. But if you like farms and chickens and vegetables, try to check out the UBC farm tomorrow because it's really, really fun. You can go visit the chickens and buy their eggs, as well as visit the students that are involved in making UBC farm an amazing place for vendors like me to go monthly um, to uh, sell my products there. And there's not just UBC Farm that has beautiful vegetables. Um, also the Kwantlen Farmer's Market on Tuesdays. Kwantlen students also have a university farm and they produce wonderful fruits and vegetables as well. I bought amazing yellow beets. So if you don't know that there are yellow beets, I urge you to go find them and cook something with it this weekend. And it's yellow because it's got a different type of antioxidants to produce that yellow color. And yellow is also a very beautiful color to dress your salad with. And it has a little bit of a different flavor than red beets. And there are also different variety of carrots there. So there's a purple carrots as well as the or regular orange carrot, but there's also yellow carrots as well too. So go ahead and find a different colored carrot to cook with. It can surprise you. And those of you who are following True Nosh, they um, should know that we're about to open our first uh, storefront location in the, um, in hopefully in October, we'll see. Oh, there's another question here. Do you recommend eating raw veggies? Does cooking it decreases nutritional value? Well, that actually depends on the veggie, all right? So I know tomatoes are a little bit funny because some people don't think it's actually a fruit because it is usually in savory um, recipes, but tomatoes are actually a fruit. Um, so cooking tomatoes actually increase um, its bioavailability of the lutein in it. So it can actually help release some of the nutrients. Um, but sometimes cooking vegetables can kill some of the nutrients in it. So such as like vitamin C, um, if you cook something too long, it can break down some of the vitamin C in it. But some vegetables actually in, improve with um, cooking also. So if you're cooking like spinach, sometimes it can actually help break down the oxalic acid in the spinach and can help release some of the um, uh, iron inside as well. So eating spinach cooked, you can also add a little bit of um, vitamin C in it, such as kiwis or even um, a citrus wedge of some kind like grapefruit or orange can actually help you absorb the uh, iron a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also cooking something for too long, right? So sometimes um, you stew some carrots or potatoes for a little bit too long and it actually can help, uh, well, actually breaks down the fiber a little bit too much. So eating um, raw carrots and, and celery could be um, because you are reten uh, helping the fiber retain its structure. So I don't recommend cooking something for over an hour and a half, such as like boiling soup for say. So some of the nutritional value can actually decrease by cooking some things way too long. 
so about like an hour or two up to like an hour and a half of roasting uh, you know that can be the limit of uh, the amount of cooking that you use for certain types of vegetables So I see someone here is also like, uh, well, Odin said he's used my oyster sauce, but within that black garlic line, we also have a uh, hoisin sauce and I call it my sinless hoy because there's no sugar as well as higher fiber and protein content because we use whole sweet potatoes, we use caramelized onions, we use whole apples. We also add um, cherries in our hoisin sauce as well as some fermented miso and black garlic. So that can help um, with the umami taste. So we don't have to use full sodium uh, soy sauce, as well as no salt in our hoisin sauce. And um, our oyster sauce compared to a regular oyster sauce is actually about 15 times less amount of sodium. We did a comparison a regular oyster sauce has 980 milligrams of sodium and ours have 65, which is why I do these things because I really want to help people understand that good food doesn't require so much sodium or sugar. And sugar is really in everything um, packaged because it is a natural preservative. And you really want to help um, yourself understand what is sugar, right? So therefore um, you can research some things like high fructose corn syrup or maple syrup is actually a type of sugar. Honey is also sugar for those who are um, trying to normalize their blood sugars because you are pre-diabetic pre or already been diagnosed di with diabetes already. Some of these sugars, um, might not be the best thing for you to uh, add into your food. And reading your labels is also a very important thing to do. We had a session about labeling. So I urge you to go ahead and review that session about nutritional labeling and ingredients. All right, so what do you guys think? If um, you have any more questions that come up after the session, you know, go visit my Facebook page, drop a message in the message area, or you can always email me info at trunosh.com. And I look forward to seeing you hopefully at uh, a, a, my store that's opening this fall, as well as some local farmers markets. And you can go and see where we are on our website. Um, there are um, these calendars that uh, tell you which markets will, will be coming up.